Now on 7 News at 10, first responders have a warning for drivers after a vehicle crashed into a fire truck while it was responding to an emergency. Plus, new legislation is making its way through Congress aimed at preventing transgender girls from playing on female sports teams. This as the Department of Education works on a proposed rule in their favor. And a new first of its kind nasal spray is now FDA approved one that is said to help treat migraines. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on 7 News at 10. Before we get to those stories, a 7 News alert. The Lawrence Police Department is asking for your help locating a suspect accused in a morning shooting at a local bar. Here's a look at the suspect. Officers say 31 year old Aaron Butler is armed and dangerous. Investigators believe Butler shot and, in, and injured a person at Topic Lounge on West Main Street in Lawrence early Sunday morning. The victim was taken to the hospital. If you have any information about the shooting or have seen Butler, you're asked to call the Lawrence Police Department. Turning now to weather, let's get a check in now with meteorologist Dan Bickford for a look at your local forecast. Dan, a nice day to maybe stay inside, bundle up, and hang out for the day. Yeah, in that way, it was a nice day. <laughs> Certainly yeah. not the prettiest of days. A sign of things to come in terms of cooler weather that's going to be taking over for the first part of the week. The rain is gone. Clouds will be left behind. We may see some patchy fog overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. Still looking at 30s and 40s. Temperatures aren't a whole lot different now than what they were a couple hours ago. In fact, those numbers will hold relatively steady overnight. Mainly upper 30s in the upstates and mid 30s in the mountains. The higher elevations may approach freezing but most folks stay above freezing. Watch for some patchy fog overnight. Decreasing clouds tomorrow, close to 60 for highs in the upstate. We'll stay in the 40s in the mountains, above, uh, below normal temperatures for tomorrow afternoon. And we could be in for an area-wide freeze tomorrow night. We'll look at that and forecast for the rest of the week coming up. Dan, thank you. Early this morning, the Duncan Fire Department says one of their engines was hit by another vehicle while crews were on the scene responding to an accident on Interstate 85. No first responders were injured, but the driver was taken to the hospital. Crews now want to use this as a reminder for drivers to slow down and move over. Our Lee Stevlin reports. Fighting fires is an already dangerous job, but the Duncan Fire Department says something that can be just as dangerous is drivers. This is a, becoming a more frequent thing for us, so we would like to get that message out there to, you know, slow down, pay attention, get off the cell phone. Early Sunday morning, Duncan Fire Department Engine 81 was struck on Interstate 85 while responding to an accident. While all first responders on scene were safe, the driver of the vehicle was transported to a nearby hospital with minor injuries. Captain Josh Hannigan says now more than ever, people need to be aware of a South Carolina law. In 2002, the state passed a law that uh, it's actually the slow down move over law. So it is, it is mandated for fire personnel, law enforcement, tow truck drivers. EMS, anyone that has to put themselves in that roadway to operate um, to help the well-being and safety for others, um, they ask that you move over, slow down. Sunday morning's incident is why more than one crew responds to this specific spot on Interstate 85. It's for something they call a block. The initial truck will actually stage out um, to provide an initial block, and then as those other units come in, they stagger back and stage back in case an incident comes. You know, we put those safety barriers in there. Um, before hopefully it gets to the incident where we're actually working or responders are working. The Duncan Fire Department says they hope drivers will slow down and move over, but also pay attention. We just see that cell phone a lot up in that window when they, they ride by and we just ask that you, you know, stay off the phone. The views or whatever are not worth it or the life of another one. So we just ask that you, you know, stay off that. Slow down, move over, and, and just be mindful, pay attention, especially in inclement weather. In Spartanburg County, Elise Devlin, 7 News. An update now on an apartment fire in Greenville County. We first reported on yesterday. The coroner's office says one of the two people injured died this morning. The Greenville County Sheriff's Office says the fire started around 3.30 Saturday morning at the chimneys of Greenville Apartments. We were originally told that two people were taken to the hospital. Today, the coroner says 57-year-old Christine Nix died from her injuries. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Developing tonight, legislation is advancing in Washington that could prevent transgender girls from playing on female sports teams. Republicans say athletes who were born as males can unfairly dominate women's sports, but the Biden administration is working to protect transgender students. Jesse Chignor reports.
It's unsafe, it's not fair, and it's wrong. While better known for football, this former girls basketball coach is leading the effort in Congress to ban public schools from allowing anyone assigned male at birth to participate in women's sports. Let girls and women participate against each other in a fair, basically a fair fight. Alabama Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville's legislation would rely on birth certificates rather than a student's chosen identity when deciding if an athlete can play. At the end of the day, this is about common sense. While Tuberville and nearly two dozen other Republicans are trying to build support in the Senate, this week a committee advanced the bill along party lines in the House. School sports should be welcoming for all students and serve as an opportunity for student development. Virginia Democrat Congressman Bobby Scott voted against the legislation, arguing there are even fewer transgender student athletes than the number of members on his committee. It's ludicrous to suggest that such a handful of athletes who pose no evidentiary threat justifies national congressional action. Scott said lawmakers should instead focus their time on unequal pay, sexual abuse, and lack of resources in school sports. Address the real issues facing student athletics. On its own, the Biden administration plans to release changes to Title IX in May. A spokesperson confirmed the Education Department is working on a proposed rule protecting transgender athletes, but couldn't give a timeline on when it will be released. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. West Virginia is now asking the U.S. Supreme Court to allow the state to enforce its banning law, banning transgender athletes from playing on female sports teams. Judges have recently overturned similar laws in Montana and Utah. More legislation is being pushed in this case aimed at protecting union workers who go on strike from losing their health care. Senators say several companies in labor disputes have taken away insurance from striking workers. This new act would fine companies who do this between $75,000 and $150,000 per violation. And a new breakthrough drug by Pfizer is now approved by the FDA, one that is set to treat migraines. Will Lewis explains. The announcement was met with a lot of optimism. Pretty groundbreaking that this is available now. It's the first in its class that is available as a nasal spray. Dr. Megan Donnelly is the lead neurologist and head of the Novant Health Comprehensive Headache Center. She's seen her share of patients suffering from migraine headaches. People have a lot of, you know, missed work. Uh, it's one of the highest um, costs to emergency departments because when patients are in pain, they seek care. It's not just in Charlotte. There are close to 40 million people dealing with migraine headaches nationwide. Donnelly says delivery of the Pfizer drug Zafret nasally will help those who can't take pills and it gets medicine into the bloodstream faster. I think it'll be case by case, but I think that there's certainly um, some hope that we have for um, each time a new medication becomes available. Donnelly says it will also help people cut down on taking large amounts of over-the-counter headache medication. Plus, Pfizer lists the drug as fast-acting, which according to FDA standards is two hours. But in the case study of the nasal drug, some patients have seen relief in 15 minutes during the trial period. We definitely are welcoming any new technology, new science that comes forward for the treatment of this terrible disease. March Madness kicked into overdrive this evening as college basketball teams all over the country learned their NCAA tournament opponents and destinations. And several of those programs have area connections. Todd Summers joins us now with more on the excitement, Todd. Oh, it's exciting, Kelsey. The college experience is about higher education and making memories and friendships that will last a lifetime. And you can guarantee this year's Furman basketball team is living the dream as SOCON champs and now NCAA tournament bound for the first time since 1980. While the challenge is steep in a Virginia program that played for the ACC tournament title on Saturday, the opportunity is there and that's all any of these guys really won anyway. We'll have more details on the Paladins and Cavaliers matchup and hear from Coach Ritchie and key players later in sports. On the women's side, South Carolina earned the number one overall seed and will take on 16 seed Norfolk State in Columbia on Friday. The Gamecocks enter this year's tournament riding a program record 38 game winning streak and seem destined to repeat as national champs. We'll hear from Coach Staley and more in just a couple of minutes, but it's not all good news for teams with area ties as the Clemson men, despite 23 wins, were left out side looking in at the 68 team field while Brad Brownell's crew can claim victories over 
several teams that did make the dance, including three over NC State and another over Duke. They are not in. We will find out coming up in sports if they were in the NIT. Kelsey. Thank you, Todd. Still ahead on 7 News, another massive storm is on its way to California while the state deals with flooding this weekend from recent rain and snow. And what is that smell? An algae bloom in Florida is causing thousands of fish to wash up on shore, but spring break travelers don't seem to mind.